Well, I've got some explaining to do, so let me go at it. I've told this story before, but the videos might not be on YouTube because it was my old David's Farm channel. So listen and learn. As you might already know, I've said before, it's a 1953 International Harvester Bulldozer that weighs 20 tons, or 40,000 pounds. It has a 12-foot blade. As you can see, and I bought it in 1995 from a farmer who didn't eat any more after he was done clearing his land and filling in the pond. Real cheap, of course, because that's the way I am. It's got a four-way blade like most big dozers do. Some modern, new, small ones have a six-way blade. I'll explain what that means. Well, two ways is just pulling that lever back and forth, and that lifts your blade up and down. The other two ways is pulling that lever back and forth, and that moves that cylinder and this side doesn't have one and what that does when the blades in the air it twists it right or left and if you want to make it six way that's manual I'll show you how to do it the last two ways is if you could move the blade like this like an angle plow well it can be done it's actually not very hard you just pull that pin out and as you can see it's got three different holes it can go in when you pull that thing out of the collar and all you do is just lift your blade up a little bit pull the tilt lever tilt one corner till it catches the ground a little drive back and forth or whichever way you want to go and that'll cause the blade to catch the ground while the dozer is moving and it'll pull it one way or the other way and then you can put the the big pin back in the collar on each side and then you've got a angle tilt blade or an angle plow it's not a Volvo, just somebody sent that from Sweden for me to put on it. <laughs> Who knows why. Its an original color back in the 50s was actually a reddish pink. Weird for a piece of heavy equipment. You can read that, it's called a TD20. Well, this company got sold to another company that makes heavy equipment called Dresser in 1968, so they were no longer called international harvesters or internationals. So then eventually Dresser went bankrupt or sold out and then another company bought the company that made things like this. This dozer is kind of unique compared to modern dozers because it has a manual clutch. So it has a big flywheel under there and a pressure plate and a clutch disc just like looks just like a car but it's really big. And it's manually engaged by pulling on this lever. It goes click. See? You leave it in neutral when you're not using it or else the disc rusts itself to the pressure plate and flywheel and then it's engaged all the time and then you can't put the thing in gear when it's running. Modern dozers have a torque converter just like the big one in an automatic car and that's how they transmit all their torque to their tracks. It's actually a smoother and better design but it's really expensive when it wears out so it's actually not very expensive when the clutch wears out on this because I've changed it twice. I can't buy a new clutch disc but all they do is reline and put material on the old metal plate and make it a new clutch disc. Holds about 75 gallons of imperial fuel and a gallon of gas and a little bitty tank under there. Like I said before, it is one of the rare heavy equipment machines. It's a gas and a diesel. It has no power at all on gas. It can drive on gas, but you can't plow with it. So what you use gas for is to start it up on a cold day without having to block heater it or plug it in or use a big battery. It actually works off an ordinary car battery. You can start a four-cylinder car. So it has an ordinary distributor like a regular old-fashioned gas engine car. Six spark plugs, kind of hidden underneath the intake manifold, but they're not that hard to get off. A coil, points and condenser. A 12-volt ignition system, and it's so old it even has positive ground. So the engine in it runs at two different compression ratios. For starting it on gas, you pull the knob and that opens up an extra valve in the cylinder head to another chamber above the normal combustion chamber and that lowers the compression ratio down to 8 to 1. Once it's warmed up for running one or two minutes on gas, then you let go of that lever and that closes that valve and it switches on the diesel and now it's running at 17 to 1 compression, which is over 500 psi firing pressure before the fuel ignites. Good old USA, Chicago, Illinois. Well, that's the fuel tank, and it was out of diesel last time I started it for you guys. And since it was out of diesel, like any diesel machine, when you run out of diesel, you've got to bleed and prime the system, and I'll show you how I did that. 
Now it's all topped up. Fuel line comes from the fuel tank, comes here, goes to cartridge style filter number one, goes to the second filter, then comes out, and goes to that big old injector pump, which then of course puts high pressure to the injectors. So I had to loosen and remove these two little screws on top, and when the tank's got lots of fuel in it, gravity pressure pushes the fuel up one, then this one bleeds first, and then the bubbles come out of this one, and this one bleeds second, and as soon as you see no bubbles, tighten them up. So also got a little place there to prime the injector pump. So this is one of the easier machines. It's a lot easier than a car when you run it out of diesel to get primed. Then when you have it started up and running on gas, you release this, put it back to diesel compression, and you keep lifting up the diesel lever. This is the throttle for the diesel. And while the motor's still got lots of RPMs and it's winding its way down to stall, it's starting to purge the pump and pump some fuel into it. Well then just before the engine stalls, because it's got no, the injector pump isn't fully purged, you pull this back out, lower the compression, and it starts running on gas again. Well, then you lift this up again, purge the injector system a little bit more, and at only two or three tries, it's fully purged and fires up on diesel, even after it's been completely run dry. So you don't have to waste any battery cranking force doing it. You do it all while it's running on gas, and just keep switching it back and forth from gas to diesel. I'm only aware that Perkins, an international harvester, ever made a dozer like this. Or any heavy equipment that was switching from gas to diesel, a dual motor, that's what I mean. Now the normal way big engines start like this, big diesels, is called a pup start. A little gasoline motor is mounted at the back of the motor, it could be 5 or 10 horsepower, and that starts very easy. You can just pull start it or electric start it, and then once it gets warmed up, you just engage the clutch on it, and it starts turning the motor around until it eventually fires up on diesel. This thing is never not started up on a cold day. I've started as low as minus 25 Celsius. Still starts an ordinary car battery. No warming up with glow, glow plugs. Has doesn't have them. No block heater. It's just always started on gas. And when it's that cold, it maybe it takes five minutes to run it on gas so it warms up enough before you can switch it on diesel. But it's always started in the middle of the winter, even buried in a snowdrift. It's got a six-speed manual transmission. And it just works like that. <clears throat> just, just like a three that way, three the other way, just like a regular transmission, almost like a big H. It's got left and right brake pedals. That's the big clutch. Then it's got two little clutches which disengage the track. So if you want to steer one way, you push the brake pedal on that side. And it, but before you do that, you pull that lever that way and that disengages the power to that track. When you brake it, then it stops that track. The other track will keep moving, and then you'll turn that direction, for example. Same thing to go the other direction with the other lever. The instrument cluster is pretty basic. Amp meter, oil pressure, water temperature, and I think that big hole in the middle probably was an hour's gauge. I think that little hole was probably a lighter, and who knows what the hell that was for. And the bees are just loving it. Right, sucker. 750 cubic inch inline straight six cylinder, really long stroke. I'm imagining by just using it for a long time, all the years I've had it, that it's probably about 180 horsepower. Back then, I don't know if there was anybody making turbo diesels. I think around in 1958 or 59, they switched these things over too to having a torque converter instead of a manual clutch. So now I'll start it up for the first time since March, and now it's the middle of September, and switch her over to diesel. I always just put my feet in the brakes. This is a good place to sit them. So pull it, put, turn the diesel off. Pull the decompression. Choke it. Of course, make sure it's in neutral. Then push the start button. Take the choke off. And keep running on gas. I mean, the, yeah, gas. No smoke when it's turning on gas. No smoke leaking anymore coming in my face. Well, it's a warm, sunny day, late September, and so I don't have to let it warm up very long, so let's switch it over to diesel. So, push the decompression, I mean, push the comp put the compression back on, and put the fuel on. Now she's a diesel.
That simple. It always runs with lots of white smoke until she gets warmed up and hot. Whenever you're working her hard too, you don't even see the smoke, or it could be a little bit black. So I can slow it down. It's got little notches on there. Just catches. Maximum RPM is 1100, that's red line. And it won't go any faster on gas either. It's got a certain throat hole in the carburetor, although it has no throttle. And the lowest RPM, it idles just below 100 RPM. If you go right down, let's see if it'll do it. It's getting pretty low. I'll try one more notch. Oh, she's really slow now. She's doing between 90 and 100 RPM right now. Barely popping that thing open. You can even hear the injector pump. You know, an engine's got good compression when it can idle really low. So we'll speed her up a little. Now if I pull this lever, it lifts the blade. If I push it, the blade goes down. I'll show you how the tilt works. Pull this lever, and it'll put oil in that cylinder and tilt the blade. The other way. Simple as that. Straighten it out. And we're ready to plow. You only need first gear when you're doing hard pushing. Normally I plow snow in second or third gear. I'll put it in second. Now I slowly engage the clutch. Oops, going the wrong way. So I'll put it in reverse. All the way forward is forward, all the reverse way back is reverse. So engage the clutch again, and we're moving. Cool. Well, there's from whence we came. I don't really see any exhaust leaks, so that's good. There is a tiny bit of exhaust coming out that drain hole I drilled in there, but that's about it, and so what do you expect? Everything else looks pretty good. Sweet. Should be on a movie like Christine or Vanishing Point. Cool.